Welcome, everyone. Um, Mike Anand here. I'm uh, Director of Product Marketing for App Dynamics, um, looking after Business IQ. So you guys heard a lot about that today. This session, however, um, I'm happy to introduce Hamish Goodwin here. Good. So Hamish is going to talk to you guys about, if you have APM, why you need to think about EUM and APM and EUM actually together. And a little interesting fact about Hamish, Hamish is uh, from Australia and just actually won our Partner of the Year for Emerging Markets. So we're really excited and happy to have Hamish here talking about his Thank experiences. You. Thanks. Um, and, and honestly, what struck me really a lot when I was working with him on this presentation is that how many customers he worked together with to help them think about the complete picture with APM and EUM together. So as we thought about putting these slides, I think the goal was to help you really think about the problems, the use cases, and how customers and how you need to think about bridging those two things together. So welcome, Hamish, and I'll let him take it away. Thank, Thank you. you. Cool. Well, good morning, everybody. Cool. This is pretty loud. Everyone can hear me all right down the back? We're good? All right, awesome. Is everyone having a pretty good time at the keynote this morning? I'm afraid my, uh, my presentation is not going to be quite as flashy as those nice little videos and things, but uh, hopefully it'll be all right. So uh, thanks uh, for introducing me, Mike. And yes, I'm going to be talking about completing the application performance monitoring picture with EUM. So just a, a quick show of hands. How many of you are existing App Dynamics customers you've got it in your environment? Yeah, a pretty good few people there. Yep, that's pretty much all of you. Awesome, great. How many of you are already using end user monitoring or, or have an idea of, about what it can do for you? All right, not too many. All right, great. So that gives me something to talk about then. So just to, uh, to set this thing to uh, start with, a little bit of a, an unfortunate story. Um, it is, in fact, a, a real-life story from a client that I have this week. So this client had put in their, their fancy new monitoring tool, which was really great. Uh, they set up some really clever dashboards. One thing they'd done, they'd put these dashboards uh, in front of their exec outside their offices, some nice big green nice big display, looking pretty awesome. However, unfortunately, one day, this is the kind of look that was on their customers' faces. So you know, not very happy there. Uh, in fact, this is actually a, a healthcare services company. So when the customer's looking like this, what it really means is that doctors couldn't get in, they couldn't access patient records, they, they couldn't prescribe medication, things like that. So not very happy. However, what was slightly worse for our operations manager that we're working with was this is what those dashboards looked like. So those nice fancy dashboards they'd set up, they'd done so much work, they're very proud. However, everything was green. Anyone experienced some of this before? The problems where everything's green? Yeah, a few little shy hands. All right. <laughs> so you probably, for those of you who have experienced that, this is probably the look that was on your face uh, on that day when you, things were going bad, but those things were actually just green. So clearly there was something missing uh, in this story. Uh, hopefully this gives me something to talk to you about is what we can do here to fill in those gaps and to make sure that that's not the situation when we make a mess. So just to, to start with a, a little bit about who am I? So the, the picture in that slide there might give you a bit of an idea of where I come from, but um, those of you who are a little more discerning audience might notice my accent is from somewhere just a little further east. So there will be bonus points at the end for anyone who can uh, work that out. Uh, this picture might also give that away. So uh, like Mike said, my name is Hamish. Uh, I'm one of our performance engineers. I work for a, a company called JDS Australia. So we're a consultancy firm down in Australia. I am based in Sydney, and I'm also our App Dynamics practice lead, so that means I, I lead a bunch of guys uh, who do work for App Dynamics, putting it in for our customers, uh, helping them understand how to get the most out of it. So App Dynamics is our, is our APM tool of choice. Uh, as Mike mentioned, we were very lucky to win the Partner of the Year Award uh, just yesterday uh, for Emerging Markets, so very pleased about that. And what this means is that on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, we're involved with our customers, ensuring that they can deliver a really great customer experience. Uh, for me, that, that really means I really like getting right down to the very nitty-gritty of how applications really work. And of course, uh, App Dynamics is pretty awesome for that. We can go you know, very, very deep dive into things. So enough about me. So what are we going to talk about uh, today? So obviously, we're going to talk about end user monitoring. Uh, hopefully, by the end of this, you have a, a better idea of how we can fill in those uh, missing gaps, make sure that we're getting the complete picture so that uh, we avoid that experience at the start. I'm going to talk about three different areas of the EUM product. Uh, I'm only going to talk at a, at a high level. Uh, I'm not going to go into deep dive demos or anything like that today. There are uh, upstairs in the, in the war room, there are several stands where the different areas are doing like deep dive demos. So please do uh, go up there, check those out. Uh, the guys up there will 
give you a bit more of an in-depth look at what it really looks like and what it can really do for you. So I'm gonna talk through the mobile app monitoring product, um, what that can mean for you. And then we'll talk a little bit about the browser uh, monitoring tool other than AUM. And then finally, we're gonna talk about synthetics. So those are the three areas. You'll see these symbols that I've used uh, throughout the slides. So keep note of those, and hopefully they'll, they'll match the symbols that you'll see upstairs in all the product marketing. Hopefully I've got all that right for you. And ideally, my goal for you all today is that when your dashboards look like this, that it's something more like this that is on the, on the faces of your customers and maybe your core operations manager. All right, so why is this important? What do we actually really hear about? How many of you are here because we're in Vegas and the gambling and the nightlife is great? Anyone there, yeah? Oh, it's at least one, awesome. I like that you're honest. All right, hopefully there might be some of us here that are, are here to learn a bit about customer experience, uh, why does this matter and what we can do about it. So just a, a couple of notes here, I'm sure you all heard this morning uh, some of these kind of stats about why this is actually really important. Uh, so I've got a couple of notes here. So one really big thing for us is that if you deliver a great customer experience, then your repeat customers are gonna spend a whole lot more of you. That's probably fairly intuitive. You give them the good time, they're gonna come back. Give them the bad time, they're going elsewhere, right? So that's one key thing. There we go. Another thing is poor experiences are super costly. Uh, we heard this morning uh, something like $2.5 billion uh, cost annually for uh, some of the largest, two, the 2,000 largest companies in the world. Uh, this, this is a stat from another company where outages can cost you a very significant amount of money uh, per hour for poor experiences. This is things like lost revenue, the, the time taken to get expensive consultants like myself to come and help you figure this out, uh, or just in the time having your teams spending effort trying to figure out what's going on and resolve that. So it's really important that we get this right. And finally, there's hopefully a few of you in the audience that might actually want to deliver a great experience just to reward your customers. So hopefully there's some of you that would like to just make things work really great. So. App Dynamics, we've heard a lot this morning about uh, the application monitoring, we've heard about databases and servers and infrastructure and networks, and these things are all really, really great. So App Dynamics allows us to do a lot of really cool things. We get to see business transactions, so we can understand how our users are using our system in the context of those things that they're actually doing. That's very important. We get to do the tag and trace, we get to build those flow maps, to do the map IQ across all of those components uh, and understand how each of those are contributing to performance. And of course we get to do deep eye diagnostics. We can go right down into code level, into SQL query level, and figure out what's really going on. However, there's something about this uh, that doesn't quite match up. So how many of you have users that sit in your data center? Anyone? Anyone have their users in the data center? There's one guy with users in the data center. All right. Well, probably for most of you, your users aren't in the data center. And the thing about all of this is that what we're really monitoring there, when we're putting agents on our applications, they're sitting on a server in a data center somewhere. It might not be your own, it might be in the cloud, it might be in your outsourcing provider, but somewhere there is a server sitting, running your application and running your code. And this might, might not match exactly where your customers are. So, this leaves us with a few questions, some questions that hopefully we answer uh, with the things we're gonna talk about today. So, can our customers get in our door? Can our customers actually get to that data center? Can they access your application? Is the door open for them to come in? Can they log in, etc.? What did they really experience? While the application monitoring might tell us how quickly our app server responded, how, how the infrastructure impacted it, what did the customer actually see? What did it actually look like for them on their mobile app or in their browser? Finally, did that experience actually match what we're trying to deliver? Did it match the kind of brand that we're trying to present uh, to our customers? So these are some questions that hopefully over the course of today uh, we'll be able to answer uh, with these products. So consider just for a minute some of the challenges with that. And what's really sitting between your code and your customer? So like I said, your code's running in a data center somewhere most likely. But your customer's probably not in there except for those two of you that did raise your hand. So that's a fairly unique case, but I'm assuming most of your customers are gonna be probably anywhere around the world in offices and in the field. So if you think for a moment about what's actually in between there. So a big thing is that the networks and the carriers, the various types of communication that might fit in between. Uh, a recent experience, I've had a, a customer in Australia, they decided that they would outsource uh, a complex logistic planning uh, application and they'd have it hosted in North America. That's where the, the vendor 
I had their data center. So it was all very good and well. The, uh, the vendor did some initial testing and for them, the page response time was something like two or three uh, seconds. So that's perfectly reasonable. It's an application that had a whole bunch of mapping frameworks, had to load quite a lot of stuff in, so two or three seconds, yeah, not too bad. However, when we got involved, we were helping the customer test how that application actually performed from their sites in Australia. And for them, the page response time was more like 20 to 30 seconds. So that was clearly not gonna, not gonna fly for them, uh, not so good. And so what that really highlighted for us was that it's very important for us to understand all the things that sit between our data center and our customers. And in that case, it's having a really large impact. So even just to get out of the door uh, from your data center, you can think there's things like firewalls, there's gonna be things like load balancers, uh, networks, routers, all sorts of stuff, just to get to the that edge of that, of that probably large concrete building somewhere. And then between there, if you think about something like someone like me where I'm all the way over in Australia, there's gonna be about 12,000 miles of fiber optic cable to get all the way there. And in between all those things, there's gonna be different carriers, different backhaul, uh, different uh, modes of communication, different protocols, all sorts of things uh, that can impact there. And chances are, you probably have very little influence over those things. Maybe you can choose which carrier, uh, which backhaul, but most of those things are way outside of your control. A and probably outside your ability to you know, stick monitors in there as well. So another big challenge of this is all of the range of devices. So how many people here have iPhones? Yeah, a few of you, good. How many people have Androids? Right, now I bet all those people of you, you probably all got different versions. Uh, you probably got different versions of the operating system, different versions of the phone, probably some of you still using iPhone 4s. Uh, so hopefully no one using the, the uh, what is it, the, the Galaxy Note 7? Anyone remember the Galaxy Note 7? No, good, yeah. I wouldn't be allowed to, I'm not allowed to take it on the plane anymore, so. Couldn't bring mine here. And so all these things, again, are, are, are way outside our control. We, we probably don't want to limit too much which devices our customers can use, because that's just gonna to block out chunks of customers that we can't serve. And another thing in there is that the, the connectivity that our customers use is also likely gonna be outside of our control. Are they gonna use LTE? Are they gonna be at home on their Wi-Fi? Are they gonna have cable, DSL? Uh, are they on 3G, uh, et cetera? You know, these things are hard for us to control, but they can have a really big impact uh, on how our customer really experiences our apps. So, with those challenges in mind, this is where we enter end user monitoring. I'll give you a very quick look at uh, one of the dashboards just there. So end user monitoring, it's, it's a really key important part of app dynamics, and what we're really focused on is understanding what's really going on with our customers uh, out there in the wild. Because of course, with everything in app dynamics, I'm gonna say this a few times today, it's all in the same pane of glass, it's all in the same tool. Uh, you don't have to go worry about going out into uh, other tools to do, do this kind of thing. And, uh, and also, again, I'm not gonna go into too much of a deep dive here, but as I said, up in the ballroom, there's guys, you can go and talk to them. Please do talk to your AppDynamics representatives if you want uh, further demos and such. So, first I'm gonna talk a little bit about the mobile app monitoring part of end user monitoring. This is where we're really concerned with understanding what your customers are really experiencing when they're tapping those buttons uh, on that mobile app. And so what we do here, there we go. So similar to what we do with our application monitoring, we put an agent right inside your mobile app. Um, so it's a, a smart agent and that will instrument the app and tell us what the user is doing with it and also trace all the activity uh, going back into your servers. A really key thing that we do with this is that we capture a whole bunch of user and device demographics. So we capture things like what was their location, what was the device they're using, uh, which operating system, which version, which version of your app, and, and these things are really important for us to understand how all those things are impacting uh, the performance and experience. We also get uh, quite rich crash reporting and diagnostics. So if things are going wrong, we can capture really rich information to feedback your developers or your DevOps people to understand what's causing those crashes. Is it affecting a certain uh, segment of users, uh, all users? And so that's, uh, that's really key there. There we go. And finally, a really important thing for us, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about this uh, in a minute as well, is understanding what the user journey is. So understanding what that user is actually going to do as they're working through uh, various workflows in the app. So that these are some of the key things that we do with mobile app monitoring. And just to give you a very brief view of what this actually looks like, uh, again, not a deep dive, but in the, in the bottom half here, we can see uh, some information about crashes and we're breaking it down by all those different demographics that we're capturing. So different devices, 
uh, different versions and such. In the top half, you get a, a bit of an idea of some of the dashboards that we have in terms of like geographic uh, maps there of what performance is like in different areas of the world, and of course, overall performance. So that's mobile monitoring. So a use case I have for this uh, that I like to talk about is uh, a cut client of ours is a, a banking client, um, and for a bank, when you deliver a poor customer experience, this probably literally means money walking out the door. People will literally be taking their money and putting it elsewhere, right? So something like this is really important uh, for some of our large banking customers. And so a challenge that they had is that they, would, they were developing a, a new version of their mobile app, and what they realized was that it was going to be impossible to test it on all of those different devices. There's so many hundreds of different devices, it's just not realistic for them to get every single one of them and test it uh, thoroughly on all of them. So what they needed to do is answer some questions around which devices should we test? What are the really important ones that we want to, to look at? But then also, what about the rest? What about the ones that we aren't going to test? What are those users going to experience? Um, what's that going to do for them? And so with the mobile app monitoring, well, this was super easy. They had a chart right away that said, here are the biggest users, here are the different uh, devices uh, that your customers are using, and right away they can say, well, here are the ones that we want to focus on. And likewise, for the ones where they didn't do testing or didn't do thorough testing, of course, they had a product that could tell them what their experience was. They could know as soon as they went live what the customer was really experiencing, what was happening across those different apps. So that was very powerful for them. All right. So next we're going to talk about the, mo uh, the browser monitoring product. So this is where we're concerned with measuring end-to-end -end right from the user user's browser on the device uh, through our application. So again, we have a, a smart agent that we put right inside our, our web app. So it's just some JavaScript that we put in. It's pretty easy to instrument. Um, and what that does is it will uh, measure a whole lot of stuff uh, when that page loads in the browser. It will get information from the browser and it will feed all that back into App Dynamics in real time. So right away you get an understanding of of a whole lot of stuff. Again, similar to what we do uh, in, in the back end where we have snapshots which give us deep dive diagnostics uh, into our applications, we do the same thing with the browser modeling product. So we get snapshots uh, from the browser of what really happened for our real users in real time. So user clicked a button, something loaded up, and if something went wrong with that, we're gonna get a snapshot. I'm gonna show you a, an example of this in just a second. But that's, that's very important for us to be able to resolve uh, issues uh, as they're occurring. Another note in this is that one thing we do with both the mobile and the browser monitoring uh, products is that we correlate that back into the, the back-end APM uh, monitoring. So what that allows us to do is we can actually trace all the way through from whether it's a, a mobile app or a browser app, we can understand how that performed for the user, and we can also understand how the back-end systems, how those applications in the data center impacted on that. And of course, that then allows us to see also what happened in between. A note on that though is that we can also use this if we don't have APM in the back end. There's probably some of you that might be using some cloud-based uh, web apps uh, services where you probably don't have control over the actual application when where that's running. So as long as you can put a, a little snippet of JavaScript in that app, you can still do this. You can still get uh, a very rich understanding of what your customers are really experiencing even if you don't have control of the, the back end apps. So that's really important as well. And finally, again, with the, the browser monitoring, we, we capture the user journey through your app. Uh, I'll talk about why it's important in just a second. So just to give you a, a quick idea again about a high level of what this looks like, on the bottom half here, there is an example of one of the snapshots. So we immediately get an idea of the breakdown of all the things that contributed to how, that, uh, how long that page actually took to put before the user could see it. So things like the network time, the time for the server to respond, time for things like content distribution networks to respond, all those things that impact that experience, we can see right away and we can understand if there's something we need to do there. So a lot of very uh, rich information. And of course, again, in the top half, there's some examples of breakdowns between different browsers, different uh, operating systems and such. So something I like to talk, I'd like to talk about here is, uh, where do our users fall out? Where are they experiencing pain? So this is where uh, that user journey comes uh, into play. So page times, while page times are important and business transaction times are really important, what they don't really tell us is what was the user's actual journey through your site? 
what we're really talking about with customer experience is how long it, did it take your user, your customer, to get something done that they needed to get done. And that's more than just loading a page. That's actually how long it takes for them to, to log in, to I don't know, find the item, look up the record that they're looking for, do the checkout, you know, process that record, whatever they needed to do. We really need to understand that whole journey so we can understand, A, is our application performing well enough, but also is our user experience, is, it, is the design of our application uh, good enough to support that? And so really, like, how fast and usable is our site overall? And also, is there a point where our users are giving up? Is there a point where they just say, it's, it's too hard, that page is too complicated, I can't find the checkout button, I can't find that bit of information, and they're going elsewhere, right? So, with App Dynamics, with end user monitoring, we have what we call session monitoring. And so that can answer those questions very, very quickly. So this is just a, a, a brief example of, of a, a session that we've captured in App Dynamics. And we can see the different pages that this user went through, and we can see the delay uh, on a timeline of how long it actually took them to get through that, both in terms of the page timings, but also the time uh, between clicking those things. And what we can see immediately from this one, it might be a little hard to see, but uh, from the back there, but the users took a minute uh, before they were before they loaded the checkout page and before they actually clicked the, the checkout button. So there's something that took them a whole minute to get through there. Maybe there was a, a complex form where they couldn't find the button. There's something going on there that we might want to look at because we'd ideally like our customers to go click, click, click and have that revenue in our pockets. And what was worse is that when they did finally find that button, it actually took them almost another minute for that page to actually uh, respond and the checkout to go through. So there's definitely something we want to look at there as to why the heck did that take almost a minute for them to process that. That's probably not a good customer experience. So, with these two products, with the, the mobile app monitoring and the browser monitoring, we've answered at least a couple of our questions uh, from earlier on. Hopefully with our story at the start, they've got a, a reasonably good idea of how their users were actually uh, being impacted. W with the story at the start, with the, with the dashboard that was all green, what was actually happening was that a couple of the upstream network carriers uh, had some problems that were just affecting some customers. So some customers were fine, and some customers, they couldn't load the site or it was being very slow, they couldn't load some of the components. And so with these products, we'd get that, that picture of what was actually going on for them. And so we can understand what our users in real time are really experiencing right out there in the wild. We can know how those external things are impacting that customer experience, how the networks, how the carriers, how the 12,000 miles of fiber optic cable, the firewalls, et cetera, are actually impacting on that customer experience. Those are those things that are outside of our control. And of course, with the deep dive diagnostics, we can act quickly on that. We know what's going wrong, we know where the issue is, we can jump on it very, very quickly if they haven't asked too many questions. And of course, again, with everything at Dynamics, all in one place, it's in real time, this is your, your real users, real time, you're getting real, real information for every single user that's hitting your, hitting your site. So that's really great. However, it does leave a one final question. And so can our customers get to, our, get to into our door? So I have a, another customer, a larger financial services customer, and they have an application where it really needs to be up and running by 7 a.m. each day. So every minute past 7 a.m. that that app isn't running, their brokers and their dealers can't get in, they can't make deals, and therefore that's revenue just gone. So it's very, very important for them. And this kind of situation is where Synthetix comes in. So I'll talk a little bit what Synthetix what it does and uh, how it would solve that problem and answer that question. So what we do with Synthetix is that we record uh, an actual user activity, so perhaps a login, adding items to a cart, checkouts, those kind of things. Uh, we script those um, using a, it's a, it's a web driver script, and we want, what we want to do is simulate what a real user would come and do uh, on your application. What we then do is we replay that from robots in various different parts of the world, and that's all taken care of for you by AppDynamics. It's, like it's all in the cloud. You don't have to worry about actually setting up those robots. Uh, it's all part of the product for you. And so we replay those in all the important locations where our customers are likely to be located. And what this allows us to do is that we can know immediately what's going on with our application even if we don't have real users uh, on our sites or on our apps. So with my, with my banking customer uh, client there, what they do is they run these synthetic scripts from about 6 a.m. in the morning, and that means that they know right then if something didn't come back up after the overnight batch processing, uh, they can know uh, very quickly and fix it up before 7 a.m. so that they know it's good to go when those brokers come in and start doing deals. So that's very, very important for them. And of course, again, I'm gonna keep saying this, 
same pane of glass. There's one, one product that's going to do it all. Uh, some of our customers end up having one product for doing APM, another product for doing, doing synthetics, another product for doing end-user monitoring. Wrap Dynamics, it's, it's in one place, right? And you can leverage that to build dashboards, get all that information all in the same pane of glass. So that's very powerful. There are a couple of alternative use cases for synthetics that we've come across uh, in our experience with that. So I'll share a couple of these with you. So one thing some of our customers need is that they really need consistent and objective reporting for things like SLAs. So for some clients, uh, when they use real user monitoring, they want to remove uh, the effect of all those things that are outside of their control on the things like penalties and, and things that are going to happen if they breach SLAs. So having synthetics running from consistent locations, doing a consistent activity from a consistent browser can actually be quite powerful for them to, to uh, feed into things like SLAs or, or contracts uh, from an objective perspective. Another thing is, is something uh, some of our, our clients really like to do is that they want to compare themselves against their competitors. So how many of you have competitors where if they provide a better experience, customers are probably going to go there? Hopefully there's a few of you, yeah, all right. So some of our clients, uh, what they will do is they'll use this to actually see how their competitor is doing and compare them uh, with themselves. Because for some of our clients, even if it's a, a second better uh, on, that on that competitor's website, then customers go in there. So they really need to maintain that edge. And so they can use something like synthetics to get information in real time about how they are comparing with their competitors that are out there. The final use case, uh, that I'll talk about there is that some of our customers will use synthetics to, to create baselines when they're doing new versions. So sometimes they might do this in a staging environment, uh, if they've got a, a test environment set up to, to deploy new versions to before they go live. Some of them will do this in production, so they might release their app to a certain subset of users, um, and they can use synthetics to make sure that that app is still working great, uh, still performing as it needs to do, find any regressions uh, in there uh, before they release that to their wider customers. So even if they don't have real users using that app, they can use synthetics to get an idea of how it's performing uh, right away. And just uh, again, to give you a very brief idea of what this looks like. So in the top right-hand corner there, you can see we've got a snippet of a script there. So it's really just a matter of, uh, there's a browser plugin you can use to record the business process that you go through, and then you drop that script right into AppDynamics. You can choose uh, which browsers you want to use. Uh, it's probably important to understand uh, Chrome and Firefox. Hopefully not too many people using IE, but there's probably some out there and to choose uh, the various locations that are important for you, and there's these locations uh, all around the world. And then that again comes back into the same kind of dashboards where we get things like the geographic maps of what performance and availability was like by location. Uh, we get information about what the different pages were and how they are performing. And of course, we actually also get those browser snapshots, so we get the same kind of rich information about what that experience was from synthetics uh, as they're running. And in fact, something we can also do is, if we've got synthetics set up and our script set up, we can actually generate snapshots on demand. So if you've got some, some issues with your site, you can go generate a synthetic snapshot and it'll go and gather that information for you, even if you don't have users on your site right at that time. So those are the, the areas of the product that I want to talk about. Um, again, if you want to have a bit more of a deep dive of those, please do go and talk to the guys in the, in the ballroom. I'm sure they'd be more than happy to. But just to, just to build this uh, bit of a picture there, so. We've talked a lot about, uh, at AppSphere and in general about Dynamics, we've talked a lot about the application monitoring, the database monitoring, the infrastructure monitoring, now of course the, the network monitoring, which I'm, uh, I'm super excited about, that's looking really awesome. And so what we've done is we've, we've added in Synthetics. So Synthetics will tell us, can our customers get to our door right now? Can they get the things done that they need to? And we can know that before the customers are actually having to be impacted by that. And of course, we've added in the, the mobile and browser uh, monitoring there so we can understand for our real users in real time what's really going on. And of course, everything's going to feed into analytics or I think what we're now going to talk about is, is business IQ and those kind of things. And so with everything we have dynamics, uh, of course, we can get better insights into what our users are really doing, what kind of segments, our platinum customers, our silver customers, all those kind of things. All of this information is going to feed uh, into that. And so hopefully those are all the parts uh, that we need to, to fill that picture. So that's, uh, that's the main point. I'll, I'll spend a, a couple of minutes uh, recapping some of what we've uh, talked about today. So you can see the, the three symbols up the top there of the things we've talked about. So we talked about mobile, so understanding from our mobile apps right from the time that user clicks that button on the app, how long did it take them to get that thing done, 
we're correlating that all the way back into our back end and talking, uh, understanding uh, what that full experience was. We talked about browser, so understanding from your, from your web apps what that full experience was, what the customer journey was through your website, and of course synthetics about answering the question of can, we get into, can our customers get into the door. Now we can answer some of these questions. We can answer the questions about what the customer experience really was. Aside from what happened in the data center, what did the customer actually experience? What actually happened when they clicked that button, when the, when the web page loaded, what really happened for them? And of course we can know that our door is open. And hopefully, with all of this, we've completed that APM picture. So in my story from the start, hopefully that when this is what the dashboard looks like, when we're all happy, all greens, everything looking great, again, this is the smile that is on a customer's face. Yeah? Hopefully that's going to be how all of you are going to look when you go back and implement this in your environment. So that's, uh, that's actually it. I mean, that's, uh, that's the talk. So I'm quite happy to take a bunch of questions. Thank you very much for your uh, participation with your hands and things and uh, listening to me today. Again, bonus points for those who are going to guess uh, where I actually, what my accent is actually from. And uh, I think uh, Mike is going to, is it still on? Can you? Where's the microphone? There should be, uh, oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so we've got a question down in front. Of, where did, there was going to be something with a microphone walking around, but, uh, oh, there he is. <laughs> You're right. give a little bit of comparison and contrast, like how they, they move the mountain and get this from what you can get from Google Analytics. From Google Analytics, okay, sure. So just to, just to say, I'm definitely not an expert on Google Analytics, so I don't know the full thing. Um, from my experience, the main thing is that Google, Google Analytics is more about understanding things like uh, which pages your customer's hitting, what their like bounce rates, things like that are, like how many people overall are using it. Because what we're really focused on here is actually the customer experience. So how do those pages actually load? How long did it take? giving the risk diagnostics of what actually went on when that page loaded. So we're much more concerned about performance uh, and what their overall customer experience was, rather than just the higher level of how many customers did we have, kind of how long did they spend on the site. So, uh, so from my perspective, we get a lot more rich performance information uh, out of EUM compared to something like GA. Does that yeah. answer your question? I, I can add uh, one more thing. So I think you nailed it. Um, Google Analytics primarily is a tool for campaign performance, SEO, marketing type of analytics. Here, what we're really trying to do is connect your backend applications to your user experience. So the session data about a user journey in aggregate or individual user, that's not the focus of Google Analytics. They're not caring about anything other than, you know, do you get people onto the site and, and how many people, I ran a campaign, showed up to my site and what that funnel looks like. They're not really saying, all right, now that I have these people, what's their experience? And then if somebody happens to call me, can I dissect and look into what that performance of that individual looks like? And then, oh, by the way, is that performance also impacting other people? That's not their focus. So we're a good complementary from that perspective, but we're not similar products in that sense. Yeah. We've got one in the second row here, and then we'll go to the front. So um, end user monitoring, okay? So any architecture would be like more uh, like um, uh, browser hits uh, F5, F5 to Apache, Apache to application server and all mm -hmm. our, our proxy to application server and all that. So end user monitoring can see only till death, uh, the first layer, right? Whatever server time it takes, it's only, so it cannot dissect to know uh, each layer, how much time you know it took for doing all that, right? Right, so uh, let me see if I've got the uh, question right. So you're wanting to know how much can we see the timings of each of the parts uh, in the, right, okay. So with end user monitoring, we're gonna see the, the total time to load the network time. And if we've got APM in the back end, we're gonna see the time between when the user clicked the button and started the request and when the server responded. So you're right, we're not gonna necessarily see all those uh, parts between the timing for each. There is some we can do. So AppDynamics does support Apache uh, monitoring or, or Oracle HTTP server. So we can see that part. And of course, with the new network monitoring tools, we can see things like the, the impact of load balances uh, or firewalls and on, on that time. How we, I mean, we're not gonna instrument each of the, the network components. Um, so yeah, we, we'll, see, we'll see that uh, what the overall time was and how much that impacted versus what, how the application performed. Um, and to some extent, 
we'll see some parts, if we have things like content distribution networks and caches and stuff like that, we will see that like in the browser snapshots we'll see you know, loaded from cache or, or loaded from a CDN. So there will be some things we'll see there as well. I think we had uh, one in the front just there. Let me go oh. this side, All right. still be reading, and then I'll come back. So good questions, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so in user monitoring and synthetic monitoring, yep. will it work with my intranet systems? So I have websites for only for my office. Those websites are not open to public. Right, right. Yeah, great question. So you're talking. So the question was about: uh, Can this work with your intranet applications? So applications are delivered to your internal users inside your network. And absolutely, as long as it's uh, either a mobile app or in a browser, you can do it. Uh, one thing we do there, if you've got uh, a private network that all your customers are on, there's a thing called the Geo Server, and what that will allow you to do is is map uh, certain IP ranges. Uh, to locations, so you can say this IP range is, is, is my I don't know, Sydney office and this range is my Los Angeles office, um, but it works in the same way, as long as those browsers uh, can uh, connect back to the AppDynamic server, so this can be done on-premise as well as in the cloud with the AppDynamic SaaS uh, environment. So yeah, ab absolutely, uh, both publicly accessible sites as well as uh, private uh, internet type sites as well. Uh, not necessarily. If, if you're using AppDynamics uh, in the cloud, then as long as your users' browsers can connect to that cloud uh, and send what we call beacons, so the, the information that comes from those agents running in the mobile or the browser app is called a, a beacon, as long as it can send that HTTP request out to the cloud server, um, so basically as long as the user has internet connectivity, then yeah. Um, if, you, if you had users, uh, if it's a secure kind of site, then chances are you're probably already using AppDynamics uh, on-premise. In which case, as long as they can connect back to your app dynamic server, then yeah, you can do that. Hey, uh, howdy. How are you? Actually, I have a two-phase question, right? In okay. your end user monitoring, you say we see session requests. Uh, yep. Can we see the request, the response headers? And if yes, can uh, like some kind of analytics be done or some kind of um, if loops and other things can be added to enhance our dashboards? That's the first yeah, question. Yeah. Second is that uh, most of our traffic is encrypted. In that case, uh, the request and responses will be encrypted yep. somehow. So is there a way that AppDynamic, uh, if we provide the certificates, appropriate certificates, can that be, be sure. decrypted okay. and used? All right, so so that kind of stuff, uh, absolutely, we can we can capture things like headers and parameters and all sorts of stuff. Um, the way we do that is actually in the backend APM side. So, so we wouldn't do that using the um, the EUM tools. One thing we can do is, is we can uh, give the EUM agents custom data, but that's something we have to have to code if we want to submit custom tags. But in the APM side, we can capture things like headers, parameters, cookies, and we can uh, we can bring that into our business transactions, bring that into snapshots, and bring that into analytics. And absolutely, you can create dashboards based on that. And when it comes to encryption, because we're working inside the application, the encryption's already taken care of for us. So as long as we can specify what the header was or where in the code we want to pull that information, then absolutely, uh, because the uh, application will be decrypting, like it will be taking care of SSL before we get to the point where AppDynamics is picking up that information, right? So uh, in some cases, if you have like encrypted payloads where the encryption is done somewhere downstream, well, that might be a little more difficult. Um, but uh, as long as it's, if it's if you're just talking about SSL, uh, that kind of stuff, then absolutely. Is there a way to include in the dashboard tracking of infrastructure costs as corresponding to end user um, cloud consolidation? Meaning that if uh, my cost, like for example, licenses for the app monitor, yeah. the app then uh, um, grows with the end users, I, there's a certain point where it cuts off and it stops being a benefit to me. You know, example, if I have, let's say, 10 million end users, mm -hmm. but only about 1% of them actually ever turn into a, an, a, an a, a useful a paying customer. <laughs> Conversions. But, I, but <laughs> I still want to have the, the 10 million number out there because it's it's part of the marketing campaign. Right. At that point, it may become prohibitively expensive sure. to have the app on every one of those 10 million users. OK. Uh, th that's an interesting question. So. Um, so, so maybe let me take a quick crack at it. I think um, I think what you're really asking is, 
what are the users that you care about, right? So I think if you look at our funnel, the way we create funnel will tell you which of the people that are uh, that are that are coming in. If you're using EUM with EUM analytics together and business IQ things together, you can then look at and do query is like, who are these people that actually purchase anything, right? Purchase over a certain value, five dollars, ten dollars, hundred dollars, more, and then identify those people that you really care about, and then dissect the performance and issues re related to the user experience for those people. So maybe that's one way to do it. Um, from your infrastructure cost and those perspective, again, those are all part of, um, I don't know if you want to say something here, but I think if you add it as a metrics to what you think is a, you know, is a health rule and then tell us that that's the metric that you want to look at, um, we can then set up alerts and tell you whether that is being, you know, broken or is potentially being changed or not. But, um, but uh, again, if you want to prioritize the users that are meaningful to you, then just do a query and identify and tell us which those users are because we'll tell you what the results are and then you focus on those users as well as everybody else who's issuing the kind of site and doesn't do any of those things. Yeah, I mean, that's something you just can't get away with, I think, unless I'm... The, the, only it, thing yeah. Yeah. The, the only thing you could potentially do is, is like, you don't have to instrument every page. Like, if you just want to know how many users hit your home page, that's something you could potentially look at. But then you've got the overhead of having to manage which page I do instrument, which page I don't instrument, et cetera. Things are going to outweigh the, the savings of maybe saving some cost there. So, uh, yeah. So, quick question is Do Synthetic support uh, SAML authentication or Windows uh, uh, integrated authentication and ADFS with Synthetic? With, you say with Synthetics? Yeah. Is that? Uh, so, as long as. So, so you, you've got a, I'm, I'm assuming you've got a, a browser uh, app of some sort and it's using some single sign on. Uh, I'm not sure about SAM, actually. I haven't, I haven't used it with that, uh, but certainly, let's think about this for a second. How do we run these? So we're not going to be able to run the browser as like one of your domain users, so it won't be able to do single sign-on uh, like that. It would have to be something where we can provide a, a username and password um, or set that as uh, like an authentication header. Um, so the, the, the Synthetics is using WebDriver, so if you can do something with WebDriver, you can do it. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't tried doing that with... Uh, a single sign-on system yet, so I might have to look at that in a bit more detail. Yeah. So, so was that in inside and outside? You mean like internal apps and outside apps? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, as it stands at the moment, uh, this is the, the robots are in the App Dynamics cloud, um, so you would have to allow them to talk into your applications. A uh, few questions. Uh, are the agents compatible with all the browsers, all the versions of the browsers? Uh, and of course, same thing for the Android, uh, uh, for the other thing. So, you, so it was a question about synthetics? No, the agents. The the, oh, agents. the end user monitoring. So it is, oh, I don't have the compatibility matrix right off the top of my head, but it is, it is compatible with, uh, at least all the major versions. I'm just not sure how far back they go. It's oh. I think it's actually about IE8 or IE7. Oh. For some of the legacy browsers uh, that don't have the browser API, um, it won't be able to get some of the information, and so that it falls back to some, some other instrumentation which captures browser timings. Uh, but on certainly on modern browsers, uh, there's actually browsers provide an API to get a lot of that rich information. So um, yeah, we, we can definitely talk afterwards if you want. We can look up the exact yeah. compatib compatibility matrix. Second question, does it give onload time or just the download time of a page, right? If there are certain things being loaded on the background, especially Ajax request and things like that, how does it handle it? And you know, the third question would be, does it give uh, JavaScript execution times or just the you know the download time you know on a page as you as from a viewer's perspective? Right. So I think there's a couple of questions there. One was about does it provide us timings around was it onload and and and, and timings? Yeah. So. Perhaps this would be a, a good case for us to give you a bit of a more deep dive demo. There are a whole lot of timers. It, gives you, it does give you things like online time, gives you individual timings for all the resources that are being loaded. Uh, there are some JavaScript timings that it gives you, uh, rendering times, uh, those kind of things. So definitely recommend going for a more deep dive. You can see exactly all the metrics uh, that it shows you there. For the synthetic transactions, you can install the agents or the probes probably in multiple locations. But how about the data? Do I consolidate the, all the data and can I analyze the same website from 
how it's performing from a multiple locations yeah. in one console? Absolutely, yeah. So, so App Dynamics take care of that for you, takes care of that for you, sorry. And so the way that works is that you write your script, you put it into that uh, into the App Dynamics console, and it will distribute those scripts for you out to those robots, and then all the information comes back into that same place. So it sits right alongside all the APM information, all the other end user uh, information, and so absolutely you can create dashboards showing what performance is like or what availability is like from different locations uh, that you're testing from, um, or uh, combined as well, so absolutely. Awesome. Well, thank you very much uh, for your attention, everyone. Thank you for the questions. Thanks, everyone. Uh, there is, just for information, there is a, is a, is a, uh, a prize draw thing. If you do want to uh, send some feedback, um, you can go on the uh, draw to win a, an Amazon Echo. Uh, and otherwise, thank you very much. Thanks, everyone.